historian John Meacham. That's how he's always introduced over at MSDNC's Morning Joe. I just got this email today from uh, John Meadows. McCain opposes, uh, opposes Trump a deficit reduction uh, pick for our Office of Management and Budget. And he's, uh, he's quoting uh, John Meacham apparently here. Look, I got to tell you, there's a reason that Donald Trump survived his comments about John McCain a couple of summers ago. Yeah, McCain did some heroic things in uh, in, in 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 for his country when he was fighting uh, the war in Vietnam, uh, along with many others. But keep in mind that if he had died from his wounds after the Battle of Saratoga, Benedict Arnold would be in the pantheon of American heroes today. He did some wonderful things. It's what he did afterward. And McCain has been nothing but a shill for the uh, for the liberals in this country and the media. He thought the media was going to back him. They told him how much they loved him. And then when he ran for president, they turned around and placed a knife in his back. And then he turned right around after taking that abuse and went right back to working with them. And the fact of the matter is, Trump got away with what he said because most Americans, especially Republicans, can't stand John McCain because they realize he's a two-faced sellout. 935, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com. We're at 23. A couple of other quick things to note here uh, this morning. Just I was sharing this with some friends of mine out of state. Idaho, and you may have heard about this, Idaho has a shortage of teachers. Ask yourself, why does Idaho have a shortage of teachers? Is it because we have more students? Well, yes, the state is growing. Uh, but it's not really the reason. And we're going to be hearing more and more about this as their efforts to try to, uh, as they call it, parity with other states in the area. Here, funny thing, by the way, Idaho is not paying teachers a fortune compared to what our neighbors are. But test scores in Idaho are among some of the highest in the country. I just want to add that. So throwing money at a problem is not always the way to solve it. Coeur d'Alene Press came across this uh, yesterday, and I didn't get a chance to talk about it on air. Uh, Bethany Blitz, that's her name, Blitz. You can tell she's from a Germanic family. Teachers in Idaho leave their jobs almost as often as retail workers do, according to the Department of Labor. Over the course of 10 years, about 27% of K-12 teachers in Idaho in both public and private schools will leave the profession or leave Idaho, according to State Labor Department. Now, you read that, you go, oh my goodness, that's terrible. But how many teachers leave their jobs across the country? A lot of them do, as it turns out. A lot of people getting getting into teaching think, well, I'm going to have summers off. Then they find out that the uh, the work days when they're actually uh, at the job uh, continue well into the evening when they go home with lesson plans and you know working on correcting tests and papers and the like. And all of a sudden, when you're working 14 hours a day, even if it's only 180 days, it becomes a little bit. It's not quite what you thought it was going to be. And and then you're dealing with a lot of children out there who just don't want to learn, and you've got all of these other issues that are taking place. And you might find, I had a teacher in high school named uh, Mr. Herring. We really liked him in school. And he spent a couple of years teaching uh, history, and then suddenly he left and became a bank manager in Florida. <laughs> and why? Because the bank managing job didn't require a lot of the same grief he put up with with some of the well, you know, there was, there was guys in school who wanted to just shoot spit wads all day and disrupt everything else. The writer says there will be roughly 372 teaching job openings that will need to be filled each year in Idaho. Graduates don't all stay in Idaho to teach as well. So this is a pitch to uh, to keep increasing teacher salaries in the state. Everyone wants to make more money. Everyone realizes that too as well. A writer on the comments section of this story, when I looked at it first online, said, well, in Spokane, substitute teachers get $105 a day, whereas in Coeur d'Alene, they only get $70 a day. And that just shows you that over in Washington State, those liberals are much, much smarter when it comes to paying teachers, taking more tax money from the, uh, from the average working people and giving it to teachers so we can make more subbing over there. But what's the cost of living in Washington State? versus the cost of living in Idaho. I've shared this story many times, my own personal perspective. I was at my insurance agent's office yesterday. When I was living in upstate New York, I've been gone there 10 years now, I had one automobile. My, my basic insurance policy cost me $83 a month. I moved with my one automobile to 
Delaware, and my my insurance premium dropped to $73 per month. So I saved $120 a year on the same policy. Then I moved to Idaho, and my same car insurance policy cost me $43 a year. I'm now driving two cars. Well, not at the same time. That's a little tricky. But I now have two automobiles, my friends, and I'm paying about what I paid in New York for one 10 years ago, factoring in other expenses and anything that would have happened 10 years ago. Now, that's one expense. I got my heating and, well, my gas and electric bill in the mail a couple of weeks ago. I'm going to tell you right now, (laughs) the combined total was a little over $60. Now, if I had been paying those same things in New York, we'd be talking hundreds. Fact of the matter is, maybe the teacher salaries are lower here because the cost of living is so much lower. But the liberal writer at the Spokesman Review never gets into that. I got a short break, 20 minutes now away from 10 o'clock. And I want to talk a little bit about that March for Life coming up as well. But we'll also take some of your telephone calls following the break. Here at News Radio 1310 KLIX and com. It's 22. Also want to point out if you're going to call me on the other side of the break, the number is 736 0300. 736 0300. 